Chronicle, the APNU, I guess, just ended the meeting with the commission. What were the primary issues put forward to the commission and what was the response? Okay, thank you very much. Um, we had sent originally a missive to the commission requesting that we discuss several issues today for clarification and to know how we are going to proceed. Uh, among them was the recount process, the way we are going to, the commission intends to proceed with uh, the findings of the the findings of the, the, the stakeholders. Um, we were also we uh, highlighted some of the anomalies that we have discovered um, and so on. Um, we were able to lay very clearly what are some of our supporting uh, issues. For example, um, one of the commissioners, Commissioner Ben, for example, has been saying that um, on the claim of the dead voting, he is claiming that those are allegations. And so we have made it very clear to him that we have substantial evidence, most of which have been produced by the counting agents in the various workstations and so on. So we've also said to the commission that if you believe that these things that we are saying that they are not true, they can be verified. There are entities, government entities can verify them. For example, uh, those who are dead, they can verify that by checking the GRO death list. The commission can do that. Don't give us um, uh, that responsibility to do. But I must tell you that we have been able to tender a number of death certificates for um, uh, such an anomaly. On the question of the people who migrated, etc., um, there is also an entity, the Immigration Department, where GCOM also contests the validity of that. We've highlighted other um, areas where we have discovered uh, things like um, oaths not being uh, signed and taken, ID cards not being used, uh, poll books being absent. We highlighted there was a case of one area where only the, the ballots came and there were no records and we are contending that that might very well be a fake a fake box so actually what we did we highlighted uh, some of the issues that we have concerns about um we also highlighted the fact that there is an order by, that was gazetted and we expect the commission to follow that order and not to have to change on a daily basis uh, those um, things that I got in the order. Um, in the, we also had a look at the uh, pandemic which uh, Commander Lawrence addressed the COVID-19 because we are concerned not only that our agents must be protected but the commission and all the dwellers on this on these premises and so um, my colleague Commander Paul Lawrence she addressed that frontally with them so those are some of the the things that we addressed with the with the commission um, yesterday when we spoke to uh, Minister Kathy she said that when the meeting is held the party would look to have a greater understanding of how the commission would be utilizing these, um, the report the observation report at the end of the process what you were told about how the commission would be treating with that document we do not have a commitment yet from the um, commission but we highlighted that that the that 
um, everything that is being discovered uh, they are we rely on the commission to make a decision as to how they will treat with it but any explanation was offered or anything of the sort was no not yet uh, the party would have just before you came you had a, um, a representative of another party alleging that the APN UFC is abusing its power in office to access these uh, that a certificates and immigration record uh, how do you respond to something like that abusing our power to access the records immigration records and that certificate anybody can access a death certificate i think what you have to pay is about 300 dollars mm -hmm. and and you can access a death certificate mm -hmm. so uh we don't have to abuse any power and look we have done quite a lot of work in 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 every nook and cranny of this country and so we are aware of all those people who departed these shores and did not come back we also know who are the dead and were not in the country and they voted you said you would have provided the commission with a number of death certificates yes could you say what that number is how many you've provided thus far and how many more you have in your possession i can't give you a count right now how much we have uh, tendered because uh, that is completed is region one and um 90 something boxes 99 boxes and um they are doing other regions to one two three four and five and i know for sure that we have in our possession that certificates for people in all those regions in relation to the immigration records um you mentioned that you, you have persons all over the country that would know that these persons would not have returned to vote um how is it possible while you have your party agents also at the polling stations for persons to go and vote in place of these people or to allow these things to happen? Allow what to happen? The anomalies that you mentioned where persons who were not in Guyana vote to Like those voters. Now, what I'm saying to you is that we have done field work. We didn't have to wait for elections to finish to do field work. We did our field work prior to that and our agents are properly trained to look for them but it would have been elections that these persons would have had to be here to vote so but they were not they they voted but they were not in country could you tell us no yes. i was just trying to ask how, you how, how come it was detected at the polling station how come how come these uh, alleged ghost voters were not like detected at the polling station uh, by your agent to say hey this person i have information to suggest that he's dead well my agent everybody my agent might not have known everybody so my agent would not have been able to detect all of it I don't know how many my agent would have detected on that day but my agent not all but you said you said that for your agents to look for these people, uh, this, this, uh, this, this, this. We, we did not expect the PPP to pull a stunt like that on the, the, these elections. You must not prepare anyone to go looking or to go after that, you but we know. You anticipated that given that you went to look for the records before elections. That is a normal thing, madam. When you do political field work, I can understand that you don't understand that because you're a journalist and you might be a professional. But as politicians, we do all this preparatory work prior to. Uh, Mr. Ali, you said to us how you were able to ascertain that persons are dead, how you were able to ascertain that those on the OLE would have migrated and not been present on March 2nd. But what we're seeing is a bit of an issue. How do you ascertain that these persons have actually cast the ballot? Because we are seeing places where we have the list where it's a procedure to mark the name. Mm. But we have agents list not matching PO's list. We have folios not returning, lists not returning. How are you able to... All right, let me tell you so very ballot? simply how we detect it. We have the list. We have our voters list that were used 
by our polling agents in the various regions. So in the station, you tick off those who vote. You tick off those who vote. Whether they were conned or not in the polling station, that's a different matter, but you tick off. But in the polling station, they didn't carry in the list of the people who were dead or the list of the people who migrated or who were not supposed to be in the country. So when they come to the station here, now that we are dealing with that, we use our list to find out from the, 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 the people the GCOM officials in here, could you tell us whether serial number so 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 is ticked off? Because their list is the official list. And when they give us the answer that yes, it was ticked off, with the work that we have done, we know that this person was not present in the country at that time, and that is where the challenge begins. But again, we're seeing issues where the ticks don't match on the different lists, or we have lists that have not been returned. What are you doing in situations like that? Um, I must let you know that the only list that is a credible list, the authentic list, is the list that GCOM has. We, our list that we have there, it helps to guide us, but the list that we have to work with is that of GCOM. That's the only official list. Miss Ali, there has uh, been repeated calls. There have been repeated calls for the APNU AFC to make public its statements of poll. Uh, recently, we heard from Mr. Bruce Golden, who led the OAS mission to Guyana, and he would have said that based on what he's seeing, the SOPs that he saw and those of the statements of Recon thus far would have shown that Mr. Mingo would have inflated the numbers in favor of the APNU. Um, one, is there a point in time you'll say maybe let's show them that our figures do match what Mr. Mingo have or it differs? How do you uh, trick with that? Is the party going to make public? Let history? me start by answering you that the coalition is not a bedmate of Bruce Golding and we don't go hunting with him. We have gone past statements of poll. We're not dealing with statements of poll now. As a matter of fact, only yesterday I did uh, an interview and I made it very clear that if we're talking SOPs, the only SOP that is authentic is the SOP of GCOM. You could have an SOP, I could have an SOP. But let me tell you, prior to the announcement of these results, the PPP they already had their results prepared and published and as journalists i'm sure you all know that and they made their sops in accordance to what they published so right now we ain't got no time with sops from pbp or coalition the SOPs from the Commission, we respect the Commission and we know the Commission is doing their work. That is the SOP that anyone has to use. But mind you, at this point in time, we are going past SOPs. I know you said you've gone past that, but I'm sure that as a political party, you might be looking at your numbers to see if as the recount progresses. Uh, your numbers may increase or it may decrease. Now it is reported that so far for Region 4, you've lost to close to 2,000 votes. Would you say this is not true? I think it's 1,500 and change. Would you say this is not true based on what we're doing? Because I'm sure you would be doing your analysis. Because we know that the recount is the recount and that we have gone past the SOPs, we are not going back to waste time on that. So what we are looking we haven't done, we, 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 we are not doing any comparative analysis for that. Um, yet, yet. But I can tell you that um, what matters now is what this national recount is revealing. Mr. Golding also referred to the corresponding statements of recount in his preliminary report. 
So he also referred to figures coming out of this account right now. Yeah. And those statements are public on the Facebook page. What did you you will also recall that Mr. Golden made comparisons with what was previously announced. If he is relying on what on this recount, then rely on this recount. Mr. Golden can't be in Jamaica and rely on comparison or this this recount here now. Okay? Yes, but we are not doing a comparison. What we are doing is counting the ballot boxes that are here and we are also checking for credibility. You said that um, we have moved past the SOP and not counting the statements of recount. Would your party sub support the declaration of the bill for the election based on the... Most certainly, whoever the, the, uh, the, the commission declares, so be it, that's the person by our other party. Why would we object to it? Well, we signed on, we wanted it this. And this is also the recount because we have Mr. Bass Williams saying that he's questioning the legality of the recount. So <laughs> that will be another question. Um maybe maybe Roysdale will be able to answer that. Not a lawyer, you know, I'm just a politician, simple little one. Good afternoon. For your question, could you please repeat it please? Uh, Mr. Mr. Williams. He's saying that he, he's questioning the legality of the recount. He's saying that there is no law in the constitution that provides for the recount mm -hmm. outside of an election petition. For GCOM to use that result exactly. to, to, to announce the winner. As an attorney at law, I share the view of Mr. Basil Williams. The Elections Commission decision, however, to engage in a process of a recount is altogether a different matter. I must make it very clear to you for you to appreciate what I'm saying. The Commission's decision to engage in a recount is an independent decision taken by the Commission. Whether it's legal or not, we are entitled, first as lawyers and as a party, to take a position contrary to that. Nevertheless, we are entitled also to participate in the process and to make meaningful contributions to the process at each step of the way. So I don't see the two positions, what Mr. Basil Williams said, that he believes that the process is illegal. I also feel that the manner in which it was done brings into question some issues which we would have to consider as a party. And lawyers are all around the world are contacting me. People are engaged in debates in illegal circles around the Commonwealth as to whether this could happen, as to whether you could have a recount of this nature before a declaration has been made. But in circumstances, it's not the usual situation. In every commonwealth country in the world, from which we inherit the traditions of Britain, that you will go to an election petition, a declaration is made. But nevertheless, our commission has decided that it has the powers to do what it wants to do. So Basil Williams or myself views at this stage are personal, though important to us, they are not really relevant to what is taking place now. The fact is, a recount is taking place. Will the party accept the results of this recount? Does the party hold the view, or does the party hold the position that what happens at this recount is final? Will you accept what happens here? We take the view that whatever happens at a recount is final. Finality and acceptance of the results means that you want to get to me to ask me whether the party will take at some point a future decision to file an election petition. Should it go the opposite way? Should it go the opposite way in relation to the PPP? Would any party file an election petition? Those are matters for which I don't think that we are in position to answer now because we could only answer those questions based on an analysis of what has taken place and a conclusion of the recount process. But in terms of its finality and what it decides one way or another, yes. In terms of consequential steps, our party can't take a position on that right now. Okay, as a lawyer, if I can ask you, um, there have been lots of words thrown around here, one of which is the from. Could you say for us what you believe within Guyana's, uh, or the ambit of Guyana's law, as a threshold for electoral fraud? And do you believe that the alleged actions of Mr. Mink will be that threshold? First, we have a lot of conclusions being drawn in relation to what Mr. Mingo has done, or what Mr. Mingo did, and what Mr. Mingo did. I want to reject out of hand the 
personalized assertions made in relation to Mr. Mingo. The PPP has been very successful so far um, in personalizing whatever they think happened to Mr. Mingo. And I can't answer a question that is premised on something that I don't know. You don't know that Mr. Mingo did anything. The process that leads to a declaration at the regional level or the district level is a long and cumbersome process. I would find it my boggling to believe that Mr. Mingo on the 13th of March or on the previous day, I think it was the 8th or 9th of March, could have just imaginarily just write down a set of numbers on a on a spreadsheet and call them. You would have attended the declaration at the Kingston Elections Commission office after the court order that the statement supposed to be put up. The polls had to come from somewhere. So I don't want to get into whether it is a personalized process and whether that amounts to electoral fraud. Because we have to first determine who is responsible for the electoral fraud. And when we're talking about electoral fraud and responsibility for electoral fraud, this process has led up to this stage of the five regions, one region one has been completed and the four other regions, it has demonstrated electoral fraud. And whilst we are debating whether something is electoral fraud or not, to the extent that the last decision made by Justice Holder, I believe in the High Court, and there's no case file setting aside the last declaration made by Mr. Mingo, it is the final position in relation to the Region 4 declaration. Now, well, let us discuss electoral fraud. The, our party, through its agents and the hard work that we have done so far, has been able to produce numerous instances of the dead voting, numerous instances of overseas and migrant persons voting. You must appreciate that to achieve that process, and a lot of questions I've been monitoring from time to time, seem to center and place the responsibility to prevent such unlawful and fraudulent activities only on the side of Abdul AFC agents. And I see the newspapers and the media carrying that as a line, blaming APNU AFC from not having its agents there to um, prevent the fraud. But the people who conduct the elections is the Elections Commission. The presiding officer who sits there with a folio, with a colored folio, and waves an ID card in front of people sitting about five or six feet away. This is Tom Jones, ID card number 14963, and the process goes on. That what? That presiding officer is the person responsible and in control of the polling place. So it's not up to AFCs in charge and control of the polling place. An objection could have been made, and we are informed, but Mr. Ali, the general secretary, would have told you just now, that we have made objections. Our party agents made objections. And I don't want the public to run away with whatever totality of objections we made are the objections recorded here. We have objections you would have made at polling stations across the country. Now, where are the polling books to confirm those, poll those objections made? They're not there. No, sir. We just emerged from a meeting. We just, we just, we just emerged from a meeting where the deputy chief elections officer indicated to us, unless I get in Senate very quickly, that polling books are still missing. How many? She didn't mention a number. But she didn't say from what region, but we, from what the observation report that we have been finding, the polling group books seem to be missing from, from, all the regions. from all the regions. They yes. seem to be a feature across the board. So when we're talking about electoral fraud, I want us to understand that it is a very broad concept. Systemic fraud. And it's a systemic fraud that has been taking place in this election. One of the things that we took away and we were reassured from the meeting this afternoon is that the Commission reaffirmed and restated that this recount process is not a mere numerical process. It also seeks to determine the credibility of the election. As Ms. Ali said, they have not been able to make a determination as to the credibility of the election as you would reasonably understand that that is a process that would come as an ongoing analysis and at the conclusion of the process. But the credibility of the elections is surely an issue for the determination and consideration of the Commission. Mr. Norton yesterday spoke about ballots cast in favor of the AP and the AFC that had no stamps and were deemed rejected. Did this issue um, come up today yes. and uh, what was the uh, solution? Definitely. The issue came up. Like Ms. It. Ali raised it. Mr. Harmon raised it. Have to get back to us and provide us with a response to that. 
The other thing is, the commission, I, I'm not sure if as we speak, the National Task Force would have submitted its advice on the addition of uh, maybe six or five more workstations. Uh, could you say if the APN is in support of the increased number of workstations so as to accelerate the process at which they're counting the ballots? Oh, let me, Ms. Lawrence. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. The first thing that we should be talking about is safety and security for each and every person in this country. The, from the inception, the GCOM has asked the task force to ensure that they have professional advice. Professional advice in terms of the utilization of space and the number of persons who should be in any space at a particular time and i'm quite certain that all of you are aware why they would have done that and that is because we have a pandemic and so it is not for the apnu or any other political party at this point to say oh i want 10 or who want 20 or who want 50 the main thing should be, can we carry out this operation with a safe, within a safe environment? And I believe that the, the commission recognized the members of the HEOC, that's the Health Emergency Committee, can provide such a technical advice to them, and that's why they would have asked. As far as I'm aware, that report has not been presented as yet. I trust it will be soon so that the task force can be able to share that with GCOM. But let me repeat again. Let me repeat again. Guyana is not safe right now with regards to this pandemic. As you would have known when I came here, the first thing I have to speak to you about is social distancing. COVID-19 is real. Listen to those persons who have been infected and everyone is saying to you, I don't want anybody to get this disease. And so that must be the online call in terms of how many more stations can be added. That is that the safety of all within this environment not only safety from the COVID virus, but also safety in terms of protection from abuse by persons within the present environs of the Otachung Convention Center. Um, so, how do you respond to the allegation that the task force has been politicized? And if you could personally respond to a claim that in entering the Otachung Convention Center, you did not submit yourself Scrutiny. Oh, that is what the young man who said hello to us while we were being um, checked uh, told you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not true. We were checked. The nurses did come there and they did check. I was and it is not one. And it's not true what Commissioner Gunrat said because he was passing and he did shout out good afternoon to us there and we responded. It is not true. And okay. the first question, mm -hmm. how do you respond to the accusation that the task force is being politicized and in the some task ways being force? Used to this right. so let, me, let me just say, the task force, the chair of the task force is the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Moses Nagamoto. He is the Prime Minister because he run on a political slate. All of the other persons on that task force are ministers because there are certain responsibilities which falls within their purview. If anybody wants to put, talk about politicizing COVID-19, see the PPP, they are the ones that put people's lives at stake. Since January when we were talking about it, they were telling people that I was lying. I was using it as a political gimmick. When we said, okay, since we will not have enough police to man the, the entry into Guyana on our Suriname borders, I was told that I was being you, I was using it as a political gimmick. Where we have 10 persons dead 
and we have over a hundred persons who have contracted this virus including children and including four families and I said to you I would have preferred to be at home right now than being out here because that is how dangerous COVID is I'm afraid of it if you're not if they're not fine but you know what at the end of the day I can stay at home but that wouldn't stop COVID all of us have to be involved in it all of us because COVID on a political party and he ain't a friend and he ain't a race he's just here to kill so we have to decide as a people in whatever decision we're making right now the first thing that we have to ensure that we put in place is security is to diminish the risk of spreading the COVID virus. Given all that you would have said, and I know you said it's from matter for the health experts, but as a minister of health, and the reports that there are almost are more than 400 people, but there's also a need to accelerate the counting process to reach the 25 day deadline. From where you stand, do you think of once there are enough precautionary measures in place, it would be okay to increase the number of workstations. So as to bring an I think you're repeating the question again. I think I've said that in everything that we do, whether it's personal, whether it is together, that we have to ensure that all the measures are in place to protect everyone from COVID-19. Everyone. That must be our first base. Secondly, let me just remind you that the PPT was invited to be a part of the task force. That Mr. Frank Anthony was invited from the inception to be a part of the HEOC. Because we knew from the information which we had that COVID-19 needed everyone on board. It's not only our call, it's the call of the Director General of the World Health Organization. It's the call of the Director of the Pan American Health Organization. It's the call of so many other leaders in the world asking that people come together to fight COVID-19. And that is what we should be thinking about. Stay safe. Death certificates to the commission. Did you present it in today's meeting or has your, your agents been presenting it over time? The agents have been presenting it um, in their stations. And that's why we have Region 1 haven't been completed. Could you give us an idea as to how many you would have submitted for Region 1? No, no. I said earlier that I couldn't give you the figure um, at the moment that I can come with that subsequently, but we have. Submitted. Minister Ali, would you um, support your commissioners on a GCOM um, to support not using the data from the account and instead using the uh, results that were declared um, that are in the That is water under the bridge, boss. <laughs> that is water under the bridge. Meaning, Meaning just that. We are in a national recount now. So are you saying that those declarations no longer matter to you? I wouldn't say that they no longer matter to me. As far as I'm concerned, all of them are valid. Or once they are signed off by the arrows in every region, they are valid. But I can determine what the commission will determine at the end of this process. I would like to give my views, but let the commission do its work. Um, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the President have used the COVID-19 issue as an excuse for rejecting the current standards of entry. Was that on the advice of the council? You were told that that is the reason why the Carter Center was rejected? I hope that you know 
that with the COVID-19 pandemic, we close all our borders. And it is only essential services that enter and or leave this country. Don't, don't, don't assume and think it's a decision. That is a normal thing that the PPP does. And I trust that it is not PPP propaganda that you are putting to us. That has never been given as the reason for Carter Center not to be here. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I think we've spent a very long time with you. And we have pointed out or we have given um, an update of what took place today. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Keep the social distancing. Yes.